we note the sovereign rating announcements by both Moody's and SMG. South Africa currently has 2.2 trillion rand in public debt. Approximately 10% of 220 billion rand of this debt is denominated and repaid in foreign currencies such as US dollars and euros. Yesterday, SP lowered its credit rating for this portion of our public debt to be low investment rate. Our rent denominated debt, which constitutes 90% of the debt portfolio, remains investment grade rated. Moody's, which continues to rate government debt two notches above sub investment grade, has indicated their intention to review the rating. The main reasons for the downgrade in the negative assessment by SLP include the recent executive changes, which they say have put at risk fiscal and growth outcomes. Secondly, the assessment of continent abilities to the state, which in their opinion seem to be rising. And third, the view by them that political risks will remain elevated this year and that policy shifts are likely which could undermine fiscal and economic growth outcomes more than the current project. The decision by Moody's to initiate a review for downgrade was prompted by the abrupt change in leadership of key government institutions. According to Moody's, this action has raised with questions regarding one, progress on reforms previously identified as essential to sustain South Africa's fiscal and economic strength and the effectiveness of South Africa's policy-making institutions, as well as the more immediate implications for growth and public debt, given the potentially negative impact on fragile domestic and external investor confidence. While the executive leadership of the finance portfolio has changed, Government's overall policy orientation remains the same. As I indicated during the press conference on Saturday, the 1st of April 2017, government has been and will remain committed to a major fiscal consolidation that stabilizes the rise in public debt, quote unquote. I would like to reassure you that the fiscal trajectory our country has been pursuing which I have been party to as a member of the National Executive, will continue. Our fiscal objectives remain unchanged, as set out in the 2017 MTBF. We are committed vigorously to pursuing economic growth in an inclusive way. While we recognize and we will address the concerns raised by the agencies, the following credit rating strengths which they also have acknowledged, should give all of us confidence. One, the Constitution and the Public Finance Management Act entrench a robust, centralized, accountable framework for fiscal management. Two, we have a stable monetary policy framework. Three, the floating exchange rate regime continues to provide the economy with buffers against external shocks, while at the same time limiting the risk of excessive domestic exposure to foreign currency liabilities. Fourth, government has no foreign currency denominated debt with low maturities, accounting for around 10% of total government debt and only 4% of GDP, which is much lower than most of its peers. The domestic bond market is deep and liquid, reducing debt refinancing increases. Loans and guarantees by sub-national government are limited and subject to national legislation. Provinces are almost entirely funded through transfers from national government. Borrowing by local governments is kept and limited to major metros with significant re revenue raising powers. Fifth, the fiscal framework 
is underpinned by credible macro fiscal forecasts. We have an efficient tax collection capability. Despite new spending pressures, government has maintained the expenditure ceiling. Six, the national treasury's long-term model suggests that existing core social spending priorities, such as education, health, and social plans, are sustainable over the coming decades. In addition, the government employee pension fund is well funded. Seven, South Africa's exports are increasing, particularly to Asia and Europe. Increasing foreign investments by South African companies are resulting in higher dividends from their offshore investments. Therefore, the deficit on the current account of the balance of payments improved from 5.3% of GDP in the first quarter of 2016 to 3.1% of GDP in the second quarter of 2016. A. The banking system is strong and well regulated with capital adequacy ratios well above the minimum regulatory capital, capital requirement of 15% and 9, we are resolved, we've resolved the energy challenge in the short term and now we have sufficient electricity supply for current demand. Going forward, we will be devote, devoting significant energy to engaging with business leaders, organized labor, investments, rating agencies and other opinion makers domestically and internationally to highlight the positives of our economy and growth prospects. Furthermore, we will add with agents to accelerate inclusive growth and development so that we can reverse the triple challenges of poverty, unemployment and inequality. Ultimately, what these credit rating reviews highlight is that we need to reignite our nation's growth engine. Growth is a prerequisite for us to address all of our economic challenges. I will be working with my counterparts in the economic cluster to ensure policy coordination and alignment between economic, industrial, and competition policy. We must also continue to work together to stabilize the government, the governance, and financial sustainability of our state-owned enterprises. In conclusion, we acknowledge that yesterday's announcement was a setback. Despite our current challenges, now is not a time for despondency. We have many strengths that we can leverage to grow our economy inclusively. We will act decisively as government in collaboration with all economic and social partners. I thank you.